Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Glad that you're here this morning. And um, uh, we've been going through, um, we like to go through books of the Bible for those of us, uh, you who are visiting us. And so we'll go through books in the Hebrew scriptures and, you know, and, uh, and then we'll go through uh, books in the Brit HaDashah, the New Covenant. And, um, and so uh, we are uh, in the first epistle of Kepha, that's Peter, Kepha. And I like to remind everyone, you know, that um, the names that you read in, in, in the New Covenant are not the names that they spoke back then, you know. Ke Peter was Shimon or Simon or Kepha, Peter. You know, and Matthew is Mediahu, James was Yaakov or uh, Jacob. You know, John was Yohanan, Jesus was Yeshua. And uh, Mary, his name was Miriam. Miriam, that's what they called her, like Moses' sister. And uh, you might ask, well, how so? Nobody spoke English back then, amen? <laughs> Nobody spoke English. That came many, many, many years later. So um, we're in chapter 3 of the first epistle. Uh, my, it is my firm conviction that when you go through books of the Bible and you do chapter and verse, um, you know, uh, and do that type of teaching and preaching, you cover every essential uh, issue in life. You cover every um, essential uh, doctrine and uh, foundations are there, um, and it's such a it's just a very holistic uh, way of being able to um, uh, preach and teach instead of always just going by um, thematically, you know, through themes. All right. So, um, what uh, chapter three is going to open up for us this morning um, in Kepha, first uh, epistle of Peter, is uh, First, you'll see the first section of the first seven verses, godly order. Godly order in a marriage. Speaking of the marriage relationship in Messiah. Then when you come to like verse uh, 8 and 9, then it talks about, and we touched on this last Shabbat, unjust suffering. And you know, you, you know if you take a poll, who in the world, who, you know... It, it, there is no such thing as any person ever who has ever lived that has not experienced unjust suffering. Amen? We all have experienced somewhere along the way unjust suffering. Amen? And so uh, just breaking that down, let's uh, look at the first seven verses and uh, on uh, godly order in, in a marriage relationship. First Kepha chapter 3, in the same way you wives be subject to your own husbands so that even if any of them are disobedient to the word, they may be won over without even a word by the behavior of their wives as they observe your pure, respectful behavior. <clears throat> and your adornment must not be merely the external, the braiding of the hand, the wearing of jewelry, or the putting on of apparel, but it should be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable quality of a gentle, quiet spirit, which is precious in the sight of God. For in this way, the holy women of former time who hoped in God also used to adorn themselves, being subject to their own husbands, just as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, and you have proved to be her children." If you do what is right, without being frightened by any fear, your husbands, in the same way, live with your wives in an understanding way. As with someone weaker since she is a woman, show her honor as a fellow heir of the grace of life, so that your prayers will not be hindered. And uh, to sum it up, we'll, we'll look at verse 8. All of you, everyone, be harmonious, sympathetic, loving, compassionate, and humble. And we'll stop right there. Father, I thank you for your word. We thank you for your word. Your word is pure and holy and powerful, sharpened in any two-edged sword. Lord, able to divide asunder soul and spirit. Lord, 
and we thank you uh, for how it changes our lives and uh, deals with us, convicts us, and uh, Lord God uh, heals us and uh, disciplines us. Uh, Father, for your word, we, we thank you. In the name of Yeshua, amen. Now, some of what I just read, if you take it within the context of today's world, of today's culture, 2024, it would appear to be obscene. It would appear to be archaic and outdated. It would appear to be controversial and provocative. Am I right? You know? Uh, I, 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 but um, it shouldn't be. This is, these are biblical principles in the Lord. Amen? In, in the kingdom. We are part of the kingdom. Amen? Amen. Re remember what we sang last week? I just kind of just uh, did that spontaneously, right? You know, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, right? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Hey, that's the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, this, these are kingdom principles. Amen? And um, the biblical principles for success in marriage, for success in the home, and in the life. And right off the bat, uh, we have, you know, that adage, and it really applies here, right? Actions speak louder than words. Amen? Actions speak louder than words. And, they, and, and the text here, Kephon, the Holy Spirit through him, is giving the example, you know, of Sarah. Now, I don't think anywhere, you know, uh, I don't think today um, it would maybe be, I think, um, kosher, shall we say, to, for wives to have to call their husbands Lord. Amen? I, I wouldn't insist that Kathy call me Lord. There's times when I wish she would, but I'm not going <laughs> to insist upon it. <laughs> In fact, if I did, you know, I'm probably going to get, you know, El Kabonged or something. Amen? <laughs> you know, but you have to take it into context of what that culture, that history was like, you know, back then um, in the early first century. Amen? Uh, and they gave that example, well, actually going back to Abraham's time. So we're really going back almost 4,000 years, maybe 3,000 you know, 800 years, whenever it was that Abraham was around. I mean, it was a completely, up until the modern age, really, you know, it's a very patriarchal society, amen? And, uh, but, you know, you have the example here of, um, of wives who have been married to husbands that weren't in the faith. Now, I wouldn't advise anybody to get married outside the faith. I just, I'm telling you, would you, if you get drawn into a relationship, I think, you know, we don't really have anybody here that that would really speak to, but I'm just saying that you do not want to ever get into that relationship. There's going to be, there's problems enough in a godly Messiah marriage, amen? amen. Because just the differences between male and female, let alone temperament and personality and background, and all of that, you do not want to be unequally yoked together. Amen? Amen. But, um, but, you know, there is this, if a, if a wife, you know, uh, if, if her adornment is not just all, like the world. What is the world into? All the world is into is just a, a show. It's all a show. Amen? Amen? It's all about fashion. It's all about how you know, gorgeous they look and how outward beauty and outward, you know, appeal and uh, they always accentuate the sensual, amen? And here, you know, um, this great instruction, don't let wives, women, don't let your adornment be that which is just physical, that which is just outward and external. Let it be that which is internal and that which is 
um, on the inside, a gentle and quiet spirit, you know, and uh, uh, one who's adorned with uh, that which is beautiful on the inside, amen? Clothed on the inside, bejeweled on the inside, amen? And uh, I know traffic is awful, I know, it's just to tell you. And, um, and so here, chapter 3 of 1 Peter, 1 Kepha, your adornment is not just to be external, the braiding of the hair, the wearing of gold jewelry. It's not about a show. In fact, you know, we really need to, gals need to live our lives, right? Uh, before an audience of one, amen? Yeah. The Lord. And men too, but this is really speaking to the, to, to, to the women and to wives. And um, when, when, when a woman has, and a wife has a pure and respectful character, that word behavior is the word character, and uh, the hidden person of the heart dominates. Uh, you know, here the Holy Spirit says it's the imperishable quality of a gentle, quiet spirit which is precious in the sight of God. Because he's our bridegroom, amen? He's our bridegroom, and we're called to be his bride, amen? We're called to be his bride. And, um, and so this is the way, verse 5, holy women of former time, and you have the example of Sarah, who hoped in God, used to adorn themselves, being subject to their own husbands, and it says that Sarah regarded Abraham as her head, and calling him Lord, and again, in that context, and uh, don't insist upon that today. But you have pro proved to be her children if you, if you do what is right and take Sarah as your example, being not frightened by any fear. You know, when you have a godly man, you have a godly husband, there should be no fear. You shouldn't be in fear. And uh, because, and this is why he says here to husbands, you know, live in an understanding way with your wife as a fellow heir, as someone weaker because she is a woman. Men are physically bigger and stronger than women. Amen? Yeah, yeah. And, they, and so that's what it's speaking of. Not weaker in faith or weaker emotionally or weaker, you know, uh, in, in character or... Uh, but physically, physically, you know, uh, women are weaker than men. They're not built the same as men, you know. And, and, and yes, even emotionally, there are things in a woman that are just like the, man, they're like, it's like the sea. They're deep, all right? Men are more on the surface, but women are deep, amen? Uh, you know, sometimes men... You know, it's just like they may get, you know, a foot or two deep, but women, man, they get into the fathoms of the depths of the sea, amen? And, 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 and you have to learn how, you have to learn how to navigate that if you're a man, amen? I've been married 40, 43 years, I'm still learning, all right? I'm still learning, I'm still navigating, you know? And so, uh, really, it's my greatest challenge in life, probably. You know, because sometimes I just, I'm just like the typical guy. I don't speak woman, all right? I don't speak female. I don't speak that. It's not in my nature. And there's things in, in Kathy that are not my nature. And so my nature can't, doesn't res, kind of res, resonate with an opposite nature. God's made us differently, amen? But we have to see that God uses both male and female, husband and wife, to complement each other, amen? And in Jesus, in Yeshua, to complete each other. You can't complete each other unless you're in Messiah, all right? You, you, you know, it just doesn't work. You need the Ruach HaKodesh, you need the Holy Spirit. You need the word of God. Amen? Amen. Godly order here. And uh, then he says, you husbands, you know, uh, in the same way, live with your wives in an understanding way. As someone weaker, she's a woman showing her honor 
as a fellow heir of the grace of life so that your prayers will not be hindered. You know, I just think of what's going on in the world today with the whole male and female thing, you know, of, of, of men or, or, or uh, you know, uh, young men that want to be women, you know, or, or women that want to be men, you know. And, you know, we realize that we are living in the days where it's coming to pass and being completely fulfilled in this generation where God has turned them over to a delusional spirit. Uh, because no matter how hard they try, a man will never be a woman. He can have a sex change operation and do all of that with the hormones and every. They can have, they can remove organs and what have you, you know, and do things surgically. But a man will still, in their DNA and in, in how God made them, can never be a woman. All right? No matter what. And it's a, the, the thing is, is that they don't realize that, unfortunately, unless they repent, the joke is on them. You know, it's a terrible price that they're paying. And it's shameful, it's outrageous, it's crazy, it's satanic, it's insanity to let to, to actually try to then promote that to children. Yeah. Boy, did I get off topic here, amen? <laughs> but again, it is a challenge. You know, uh, the whole male-female relationship. But here... You know, the Lord is showing Peter and the Holy Spirit through Peter, Kepha, you know, if you do this, you know what? You're going to make it. You'll have victory. You'll have, you'll have blessing. You'll have favor. You'll work through every difficulty, every challenge, every adversity, then, you know, hardship, you know, and you will be pleasing to God. Women, you will be pleasing to God if you just have the inner adornment of a gentle and quiet spirit and, 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 uh, and, and have that pure and respectful character. And, and men, you know, if you would honor your wives and live in an understanding way, uh, that women are not made like you, all right? They're not rough, you know, and, and, and gruff, you know, and they're just, there's a, just a whole different, nature and you have to learn how to swim in those waters amen and 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 um, and show honor as a fellow heir of the grace of life and unless you do that your your prayers are just going to go boop you know they're, they're just going to be like a popcorn they're going to hit the ceiling come right back down you gotta gotta walk in forgiveness you gotta walk in grace you got to walk in empathy and, and, and like he says, be sympathetic. Have empathy. Amen? Um, verse 8, for all of us, he says, for the whole human family, to sum up, all of you be harmonious. Learn to walk in harmony. You know, defer to one another. You know, learn to compromise. You don't compromise husbands with wives Wives or husbands, forget it, man. It's always going to be knotted up. Amen? you got to compromise. And so also in the body of Messiah. So also with your family and in life. you got to learn to compromise. Learn how to walk in harmony. All of you be harmonious. There's more music in your life if you are harmonious. Amen? Amen. And uh, be sympathetic and loving and compassionate, and humble. And look at verse 9. Now we're moving into um, unjust suffering. Not returning evil for evil, or insult for insult. The whole world, the, the fallen nature of man, the fallen carnal nature, is eye for eye, and tooth for tooth, and tit for tat. Amen? Amen. You, you hurt me, I'm going to hurt you. It's just a knee-jerk reaction, amen? Insult for insult. And, uh, and, and, you know, you slap me, I slap you. You know, you get me, you, you, you know, do something, you know, uh, hurtful, say something hurtful, 
and it's just a knee-jerk reaction. We have to learn to, 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 to bring that old nature to the cross, amen? We got to crucify that old nature and not, not allow that ugly, you know, old man, old woman to continue to manifest, amen? We got to drag it to the cross and just nail that sucker to the tree, amen? Put that to death. When it, when it raises its ugly head, you know, just off with its head, amen? And get back to repenting. I, I tell you what, um, I, I repent probably every day of my life. I, I, it means part of the oxygen that I breathe, the air that I breathe, because I am a very flawed human being, all right? I am a very flawed human being. I have blind spots still, you know? I still probably have a few spots, you know, and, and, and wrinkles, you know, and uh, um, I can't get them out, you know, myself. Uh, Kathy sees them more than me, right? And, uh, and, and, and makes them visible, but I, you know, not even Kathy can get them out, amen? I mean, sometimes we need a detergent that does, Kathy doesn't even own, amen? Well, what you really need is the blood of Yeshua, amen? You know, and, and we just, we all have that, amen? As I'm saying that, I said, we all have blind spots, we all have flaws, you know, and imperfections, and we have to help each other. Would you help me help, allow me to help you? And you know, we have to, let's, I mean, take a moment here and just look around and say, brother, sister, help me. Help, come on, say that. Brother, sister, help me in Yeshua. Help me in Yeshua. There are things that I don't see, amen? There are things that I don't see. There's things that you don't see. We need each other, amen? And so he says here, not returning evil for evil, that old nature, that tit for tat, insult for insult, but giving a blessing instead. And um, you were called for this very purpose. Everybody say with me. You were called, you were called for, this purpose, for this very purpose to inherit a blessing. To inherit a blessing. Amen. Amen. That God called us to inherit a blessing. Every day that we live, that's God's calling for us. He called us to inherit a blessing so that we are blessed to be a blessing. Amen. I am called to receive all of God's blessings that possibly a human being a man can receive in this life, why? Not just uh, for myself, amen? Not just to hoard it for myself, so I can be a blessing machine, amen? So I can bless others. You know, I am called to be blessed. You are called to be blessed, to be a blessing, amen? And, 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 and that is our calling. God wants to bless us. And he wants us to, um, to learn to, um, to bless others. Now, look, let's read on. Verse uh, 10. The one who desires life to love and see good days, <laughs> who doesn't? Who doesn't? All of us, right? Must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. All right? The power of life and death is in the tongue. And we studied that when we did the epistle of Yaakov, James Yaakov, just a couple of months ago. We spoke about the power of the tongue about a month ago. Uh, we have to refrain from speaking evil. It's hard. You turn on the television and you have the, all this political garbage going on. It's hard. Hard, amen? That's why I really limit what I watch. Because I don't like what I watch. You know, I just don't like it. And, um, you know, we have to learn how to um, rein in our tongue. We talked about the tongue is like a rudder of a ship, right? It's like a bit in a bridle. 
you know, the bridle that you have to have a bit that you have to have. Where's Yvonne? For a horse. So you can get on a horse and he can go with, and he doesn't bite you, amen? Especially if he doesn't, you know, she's not familiar with you, right? Yvonne, you know, does horses. She has a horse farm. And, and she horses around all the time, amen? And, and, the, and the, the, the horses that she gets to know, they got a bridle in the mouth, right? And, and God wants us to learn to bridle the tongue, amen? And he wants us to understand that like a rudder of a ship, you know, uh, that tongue has a lot of power to steer a great ship through all those ocean depths, amen? amen. And, uh, and then he says that um, he must turn away from evil and do good, and he must seek peace and pursue it. You know, Hebrew says that as much as lieth within you, be at peace with all men, amen? Uh, I give you a little example um, I have the most lovely, I mean, I have just a few family members that are left that have not gone, uh, you know, and passed away. I have this 90-ish, you know, she may be like 92, 93 now, my Aunt Renee. I love her. I love her so much. She's out in New Jersey, right? She's my mother's sister, and uh, you know I've known her all my life. I've known my uncle Bernie all my life, right? So I'm on Facebook and I'm posting some things, you know. And I, you know, lately, man, she has not liked what I posted, right? Because unfortunately, Aunt Renee hasn't accepted Yeshua yet, right? And so she saw some posts, and man, went into all these different tirades. But you know what the Lord showed me? Don't even respond. Amen? Just love her back and say, Dear, you know, Aunt Renee, I love you so much. You know what? Let's not do politics. If you see something that I post that you don't like, simply delete it. Delete it. And let's not. Politics is divisive. All right? It always creates a divisiveness and separation and hurt, you know, it, let's not do this at all, just delete it. I love you, you're so important to me. And that's how I responded. How did I respond? You know, I, it says here, he must turn away from evil, do good, you know, not tit for tat, he must seek shalom. Everyone say shalom. shalom. Peace, peace, and pursue it, amen? You have to do it. And, um, you know, I used to always be the kind of New York, Brooklyn Jew, you know. Even many years after I was saved, when I was still young in the Lord, I felt like, you know what, if I feel something, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak my mind, right? People, know, they know where they stand with me. I'm always going to speak my mind. You know what, the Lord showed me that I'm just to speak his mind, and if I'm not speaking his mind, shut up and be quiet. <laughs> now, I don't always succeed, you know, but I'm just telling you where it's at. I recognize, I recognize that, amen? amen. And then the one who desires life to love and see good days must keep his tongue from evil, his leap, lips from speaking deceit, must turn away from evil, do good, seek peace, shalom, and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous, and his ears attend to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against the evildoers. Now, I don't know about you, but I want the Lord's ears attentive to my prayers and to my voice and to my heart. Amen? And, if, and, and I don't want the face of the Lord to be against me. Amen? I want always the Lord, I want to seek his face, and I want the face of the Lord to be toward me and sense his pleasure, amen, sense his good pleasure. And a verse, which I do right now, amen, hallelujah. I do. Verse 13, who is there to harm you if you prove zealous for what is good? It's kind of like what Kepha just said about the wives. He said, wives, if you do that, you know, again, in, um, let me see where he just said that. Um, oh, 
probably won't be without being frightened by any fear. He says in verse five, if you do what is right, you know, you prove to be Sarah's daughters, not being frightened by any fear. And here again, you know, in verse 13, who is there to harm you if you're zealous for what is good? Amen? You could fear no evil, for thou art with me, for thy staff and thy rod, they comfort me. Amen? We're not to get into any fear. Now, we're going to battle fear until the Lord comes back or takes us home. Amen? But we just have to, we have to battle it and not give in to it. Amen? It's so easy to get into worry. It's just, I did the other day, yesterday, you know? And, and, you know, and then if I get into it, you know, Kathy will point it out or the Holy Spirit will point it out, right? Same with Kathy, I point it out or the Holy Spirit will point it out. It's almost like we're going to experience it in this world, in this broken, fallen world, but when, as soon as we realize it, we need to cast it out, amen? We need to cast all our anxieties on him, for he cares for us, amen? And we need to say, wait a minute, God loves me perfectly in perfect love, all right? Yeshua is, cast out all what? Fear, amen? I will fear no evil. And um, <clears throat> verse 14, and even if we should suffer for the sake of righteousness, you are blessed, and do not fear their intimidation and do not be in dread. And he is actually, part of what Kepha is doing here is he is, he's, he's got a lot of the word inside of him. He's speaking from Psalm 34, verse 10 through 12. I'll read that real quick. Psalm 34, verse 10 through 12. I love this because he just, um, the word is so powerful. If you just have the word filled your mind, and fill your thoughts, man, the enemy cannot combat that. Uh, Psalm 34, and verse, ten, verse 10, the young lions do, um, do without and suffer hunger, but they, they who seek the Lord will not lack any good thing. Come ye children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Verse 12, who is the person who desires life? Isn't that what Kepha just spoke? Who's the person who desires life that he may see good? He's quoting this. Uh, let him keep his lips, let tongue from evil, and his lips from speaking deceit, turning from evil, doing good, seeking peace, and pursuing it. The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous, and his ears are toward the cry for help. The face of the Lord is against the evildoers to eliminate their memory from the earth. So, Kephar is just full of the word of God. And here he actually says, you're blessed. Do not fear their intimidation and do not be in dread. And now he's actually quoting Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 11. He's quoting from Isaiah. Let me just take you there quickly. Isaiah 8 um, and verse 11. Uh, For so the Lord spoke to me, says Isaiah, with mighty power and he instructed me. Do you want the Lord to speak to you with his mighty power and instruct you? Get in this word. Get in this book. Live in this book. Do not neglect this book. Amen? For the Lord spoke to me with mighty power and instructed me not to walk away. Walk in the way of this people. Don't walk in the way of the culture. Don't walk in the way of this lost and idiotic world. Amen? And he says, um, <clears throat> uh, you are not to say it's a conspiracy regarding uh, everything that this people call a, a conspiracy. Don't get into any conspiracies, amen? Don't do it. Just be in the word, amen? You are not to fear what they fear or dread what they dread. It is the Lord of hosts, Adonai Zivod, who you are to regard as holy. He shall be your fear. He shall be your dread. Amen? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord, the reverence of the Lord is a strong tower and a righteous run into in our city. The fear of the Lord, the reverence of the Lord is a fountain of life. Amen? Is a refuge. Amen? 
And um, back to uh, um, chapter 3 of 1st Kepha. But sanctify, verse 15, Messiah as Adonai, as Lord in your hearts, always be ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is in you with gentleness and with respect. Or as it says in the King James, right? I memorized this many, many years ago. Always be ready to give an answer to those um, who ask of you to give an defense, to give an account for the hope that is with, within you with gentleness and with reverence. Amen? There is a hope that's in us. There's a hope. We don't hope that our babies and that our children and that our grandchildren, have, you know, what kind of world are they going to live in? No, they belong to Yeshua. They belong to our Father in heaven, our Abba in heaven, and there will always be a hope. There will always be a pur purpose. There will always be a prophetic destiny. There will always be the hand of the Lord. There will always be the hope in God, in Messiah. Amen? And they, they will, God loves them more than we do. Amen? It's easy to get into that. I mean, I, I got a grandson we've taken care of for two and a half years, all right? And, and you look at the world around you, right? It's easy to go there, isn't it? It's natural to go there. But then you pull yourself back to the center of gravity, which is Yeshua, amen? You pull yourself back to that center. You pull yourself back to the core, amen? And you go, God loves this child. God loves this baby, this toddler, this little boy, this little girl, you know, more than we ever could, amen? Amen? In fact, all the love that I have welling up in my heart towards this little one, God put it there. Amen? That's God's loving that little child through me. Amen? And even when you're gone, it doesn't mean that the Lord will stop loving on them and caring for them, even if I can't see it. Amen? Ah, oh, thank you, Lord. There are many times in this life that we may suffer for the sake of righteousness, but we're not to fear, and we're not to be troubled by it. Amen? And uh, because God has something. He has something he's going to do with it. He has something he's going to do through it. He has something that he's going to do in it. Amen? And... Um, <clears throat> And so we always got to be ready to give an answer, give an account for the hope that's within us. Your suffering, your unjust suffering, you know, the betrayal that took place with you, with that man, that woman, whatever it may be, you know, that desertion, all right, that uh, rejection, you know what, that abandonment, all right, that a broken relationship. God will use it to do a deep work in you and that, you know, somehow God uses rejection that when you run to him and you just totally immerse yourself in the fellowship of his sufferings, what we used to call the cross, all right? All his rejection will heal your rejection. He'll make your rejection and he'll make that betrayal He'll make that abandonment, that desertion, part of what he went through on the tree. And it will heal you if you allow him of your rejection. It'll heal you if you allow him of the abandonment that you have felt. It'll heal you if you allow him to heal you of wherever you were betrayed. Wherever you were deserted. Amen? Then you will be able to give a reason for the hope that's in you to those that are still totally broken by those betrayals and those rejections and those abandonments, those desertions, those woundings and those hurts. You will be used of the Lord to help bring him to Yeshua. Come on now. It's true. This is, this is the gospel. This is the kingdom. 
Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Hey, that's the kingdom of God. Amen? There is power. But the power is how the Lord has transformed you. The power is how the Lord has delivered you. The power is how the Lord has got a hold of you that no matter what has happened in your life, you know that you know that you know that you know that you're loved by your heavenly Abba. You're loved by your Abba in heaven. You're loved by your shepherd. Amen? Yeshua, Jesus. And he got you. He got your back. He got your front. He got your, 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 your the nose on the, in the, your, he got all of you from your nose to your toes. Amen? He got you. And then, um, just reading on, always give an answer for the reason of the hope that's in you. And keep a good conscience. Keep a good conscience. So that in the thing in which you are slandered, those who disparage your good behavior in Christ, in Messiah, will be put to shame. You know what happened is that even in this conversation by text with my aunt, you know, my witness of Yeshua went forth powerfully. I don't know what the Lord's going to do with that because I still pray for their salvation. Lord, would you save Aunt Renee and Uncle Bernie and their children in the name of Yeshua? and all of our Jewish family and Gentile family that doesn't know you, would you save them in Yeshua's name? And my response back, it left a witness, didn't it? It left a testimony, a witness. She, was, she says, oh, in, the, in the, just relating to this conversation about, um, you know, I'm, I'm totally pro-life, amen? And so I posted some things about pro-life and she came back and she said to me, um, you know, in the Jewish religion, we don't believe, a, you know, a baby is, uh, really has life until they're born. I went back to her and said, oh, dear precious aunt, that's not true. Only second, Reformed Jews, and Reformed Jews, man, their Judaism is like the Unitarian Church, all right? It is this totally new age. There is nothing biblical about it in the Reformed congregations. A lot of heritage, a lot of tradition, but there's this God is not there. And he said, only Reformed Jews and secular Jews believe that. And I'll tell you, we should, you know, what does God believe? And then I, I gave her Psalm 139. You know, when you were, you know, I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Amen? And, and before you, in your unformed substance, you know, it was all written in the book, right? And I sent that to her. And the next day, she sent me back and she said, I think you're right. Come on now. She conceded. And she said, all right, I concede. I, I see what you're saying, you know. So, you know, there's a witness, amen. And it says, always keep a good conscience so that in the things which you are slanted, those that disparage your good behavior in Messiah will be put to shame. And I believe her conscience was pricked when she read Psalm 139. For it is better if God should will it that you should suffer for doing what is right rather from what is doing what is wrong. For Messiah also suffered once for all time the just for the unjust so that he might bring us to God having been put to death in the flesh and made alive in the spirit. You know, Messiah suffered. He, it was the just for the unjust. Amen? Amen. And, um, and once there are times when the Lord wants us, he allows us, he permits us to suffer unjustly. Amen? But there's a reason behind it, and there's a purpose in it if we give it to the Lord. It's not going to feel good. It won't feel good. It hurts. It could be grievous. Amen? But the Lord will use it, and he will redeem that pain. The Lord redeems every pain. Can I hear an amen? He redeems every pain. And, um, 
And uh, then we have here um, probably the most um, obscure and mysterious passage in all of the Brit Hadashah, in all of the New Covenant. All right? This is a very obscure and mysterious passage. And um, let me read it. For Messiah also suffered for sins once and for all, the just for the unjust, so that he might bring us to God, having been put to death in the flesh, made alive in the spirit, in which he also went and made proclamation to the spirits in prison, who were once were disobedient, when with the patience of God kept waiting in the days of Noah, during the construction of the ark in which a few, that is only eight persons, were brought safely through the water. And corresponding to that, mikvah, baptism, mikvah in Hebrew, now saves you. Not the removing of uh, dirt from the flesh, but an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Yeshua Messiah, who is at the right hand of God, having gone into heaven after him, Angels and authorities and powers have been made subjected to him. Now we just, that's, that's, a, that's a huge biteful right there. Amen? Let me try to help uh, to the best of my limited ability. And, um, and, and, and we have to understand that, um, that there were fall either, let me see, just kind of glance at my notes for a moment. <laughs> All right. Who are these spirits in prison that he made, Yeshua made proclamation with? Now we know when he was put to death, he was in the grave for three days. And, uh, you know, and, and, and so we, uh, who are these Spirits in prison that he made proclamation to. I offer two explanations, all right? It's probably one or the other, amen? And this is never something that you should be dogmatic about. It's a mystery, remember? Remember I talked about mystery? We have to learn to be comfortable with mystery. Mystery is a good thing, amen? And uh, so here's two explanations of this very obscure text, maybe the most obscure text in the Brit Hadashah. The first, that, that there are angels who abandoned their proper abode, which Jude speaks about in verse 6 of Jude. They may be the angels who abandoned their proper abode, and um, that fallen angel realm of principalities and powers and rulers and of darkness, who were stripped of their powers and made into a public spectacle by Yeshua's resurrection from the dead. To me, that's the most, I think, uh, biblical explanation of who these spirits were. Now follow me, I'm gonna, you know, it could be, it could be that, um, that they were people who, who were, who in the days of Noah, they uh, were, they went on to, you know, in, into the place of the dead, Gehenna, you know, and somehow through Yeshua's death and his re resurrection, the Lord proclaimed liberty to the captives and whoever in that early world, you know, uh, before, you know, uh, the flood, you know, Maybe there was a proclamation made, you know, and there was salvation. I don't know. I think my first explanation makes more sense. That's, that's how I see it. And, um, and, and, but here, he talks about how the flood symbolically is a metaphor of baptism. It's a metaphor for what we call mikvah in Hebrew, of baptism. And um, because the old was put to death, which is what mikvah baptism is symbolic of. Amen? You put the old man to death, and you come back out of the waters, 
You know, it's a public proclamation before God and before men, like, like marriage is supposed to be. Amen? And, and uh, the old is, uh, is, is drowned and is put to death, and a new one, you're a new creature in Messiah, and uh, you're, you uh, identify with him in his death, and you identify with him in his resurrection, amen, as new creatures in Messiah, as new creatures in Messiah. And for the second time, he says, it's an appeal to God for a good conscience. You cannot put a price tag on a good conscience. Amen? Has anybody here ever had a guilty conscience? Come on now, everybody should raise their hands. Amen? You can't, how do you put a price tag on having a clean conscience? Having a clear conscience. You can't put a price tag on that. Amen? A million bucks? You know, 10 million? A billion? I couldn't, there's no price tag. Amen? And uh, in the Lord, so he says here that, um, that in his death and in his resurrection, he proclaimed the gospel, his victory, his atonement, his salvation, his, you know, uh, 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 answer uh, to those spirits who are in prison, whether they be angelic, the fallen angels, or whether they be, you know, mankind, um, you know, that he's proclaiming the gospel, and, uh, and now through his resurrection, he is, sits at the right hand of God, all right, where he is right now, and all angels, every angel, the devil himself, all right, and all authorities and powers in heaven and on earth are subjected to Yeshua. Now, we may not see it manifest in this world yet, but they are. Amen? They are. And Messiah is at the right hand of the Father, and all are subjected unto him. And, um, and so, we also see the beautiful picture of the salvation of Noah. Kepha talks about, and... Uh, and Yeshua the Messiah, he is our ark in this world. Amen? He is our ark in the flood of evil that's happening in this world all around us. And it's just a flood that's happening in America. It's happening all around the world of darkness, of wickedness, of godlessness, of lawlessness, of, of anger, of hatreds, of violence. You know, Yeshua is the ark. He is Gabriel's ark. He's your ark in this world, Maria. He's your ark in this world, Jordan. And uh, however long the Lord takes to come back, you know, and, and I'm not just picking on anybody, but he's your ark in this world, amen? amen. All of us. Amen. And, uh, you know, until the Lord comes back or takes us home, we are safe in that ark, amen? amen. We are safe. And be the name of Yeshua, all angels, all authorities, all powers, all principalities are subject to Yeshua. So not only be filled with the word, but keep that name of Yeshua Jesus on your lips all the time. Amen? All right, I think I, I have preached all that I should preach this morning. Amen? Can we close with a song, something? Amen. How about, can we do a manual again? If you wish. I wish. That's kind of like, uh, what was the name of that movie? Your wish is my command. <laughs> Amen. As you wish. Let's all stand. Let's worship him. And uh, before we close, hey, guests, we have food. Please don't leave, all right? Would you please schmooze with us? Amen. I tell everybody we don't booze, but we do schmooze. Amen. And we have food, and we need you to eat our food. Amen. And in fact, Father, just bless our food and our fellowship in the name of Yeshua. Amen.